right, thanks for watching. And today we will prove the limit comparison test, which basically says that if in the long run your series becomes like a convergent series, then it converges. And if in the long run it becomes like a divergent series, then it diverges. Here's what I mean by that. So consider the series to be the sum, if you want, from n from 1 to infinity of n cubed minus 1 over n to the fourth plus one. So this is, if you want, your a n. And notice, in the long run, this thing, the sequence, n cubed minus one and n to the fourth plus one, becomes like n cubed over n to the fourth. So in the long run, this series becomes like one over n, which diverges. So intuitively, this should diverge as well. But really rigorously, you have to use the limit comparison test, which basically says let bn be just n cubed over n to the fourth, which is 1 over n. Then look at the ratio a n over b n, which is n cubed minus 1 over n to the fourth plus 1 over 1 over n, which is just n times n cubed minus 1 over n to the fourth plus one, which is n to the fourth minus n over n to the fourth plus one, which as n goes to infinity goes to one. And this one, we call this c, and it's very important that c be e not zero and not infinity. Then, Then since the series of Bn, which is just a harmonic series, diverges, we conclude that the series of An, which is our original series, diverges as well. And that's, in essence, what the limit comparison test says. If an over bn goes to some constant that is neither zero nor infinity, then uh, the convergence or divergence of bn implies convergence or divergence of an. And now let me state it and prove it. So a theorem. So suppose uh, an and bn are non-negative, and moreover, of course, you don't want to divide by zero, so bn is non-zero, and an over bn goes to some constant. So, and the limit as n goes to infinity of an over bn goes to some constant that is, of course, non-negative, because both an and bn are non-negative, but it's important that it's non-zero and not equal to infinity. Then, basically the series of an converges if and only if the series of bn converges. So convergence of one implies convergence of the other, and divergence of one implies divergence of the other. So let me prove this, and surprisingly it's not too hard to prove, because usually those convergence tests are quite tricky to prove, but this one is okay. Now, why do we need the fact that c is non-zero in order to give us some wiggle room? Since c is non-zero, we can actually choose some number between zero and c. And that number, let's call it c minus epsilon. So let epsilon positive be such that c minus epsilon is still positive. For instance, let epsilon be c over two. Then, why did what I write epsilon? Because now we want to use that limit fact. So since this limit of a n over b n is c, well, by definition of a limit with that epsilon, we know that there is some threshold. 
is capital M such that if M is bigger than capital M, then the difference between the two is less than epsilon. The difference between AN and BN and C is less than epsilon. But then remember, absolute value of something being less than epsilon is the same thing as that something be being between minus epsilon and epsilon. And so in particular, this implies AN over BN is between C plus epsilon and C minus epsilon. And then just take this and multiply this by BN. And then AN is less than C plus epsilon BN and greater than C minus epsilon BN. But here comes the fun part. Well, suppose the series of BN converges, then by comparison, the series of AN converges. Just using this. But if the series of BN converges, then by comparison, the series of AN converges. It doesn't matter that we start at capital N because there are just finitely many terms from 1 to capital N. And what if the series of BN diverges? Well, look at this now. Well, if the sum of BN is infinity, then by comparison, the sum of AN is also infinity. So if the sum of BN diverges, then by the comparison test, the sum of AM diverges as well. And therefore, what do we get? We get that the series of BN converges if and only if the series of AN converges. So in other words, the series of AN converges if and only if the series of BN converges. And that's it. How nice is that, okay? I told you, it's not, it's not the worst proof in the world. Uh, however, let me also add, uh, so there is actually a, a generalization of the limit comparison test, which is, well, which is or is not more powerful depending on uh, your taste. And it just says the following, it's called the limb soup comparison test. And again, same assumptions as before, so AN and BN are non-negative, and BN is non-zero, but this time suppose, not that the limit, but that the limb soup, as n goes to infinity, of AN over BN equals C, but I believe here we can relax C to be um, also non-zero, also zero. So, so we have this where, C is between zero and infinity, but then we just get a one-sided thing, then if the series of BN converges, then the series of AN converges. And uh, what do I wanna say? Um, so again, I told you it's a, uh, um, it's either stronger or less strong, depending on how you want it. Because the nice thing is, um, here, we're just replacing limit by limb soup, which is easier to exist. And here, we're also replacing this condition by C greater or equal to zero, but we just have that one-sided thing. Just that if BN converges, then AN converges, but not vice versa. However, it's still nice because consider the following thing. Here's where you can apply this. Consider the sum of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared. So this is a n. And, okay, I know, you can just apply the regular comparison test, but let's just apply this limb soup comparison test. Well, let b n be the same thing, but without the minus 1 to the n. Let Bn be 1 over n squared. Then let's look at the limb soup 
of a n over b n, that is minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared, over 1 over n squared, and this cancels out and you get minus 1 to the n plus 1. And here's the thing, the limit of this doesn't exist because it just alternates, but the limb soup of this exists and it's 2. So now the limb soup of minus 1 to the n plus 1, that is 2, which is non-negative and not infinity. Therefore, because the series of Bn converges, the original series converges as well. So since the sum of Bn, which is the sum of 1 over n squared, converges, we get that the sum of a n converges as well. But again, we cannot just apply the regular limit comparison test because this limit doesn't exist, but the limb soup does. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.